who inform government and the members of the National Assembly that we sent three government officials to Rhode Island on a study tour uh, to study on uh, water quality, to be able to tell the world and the Gambian people that the Gambian waters are, are, are safe, they are clean, and there is no health risk associated with eating oysters. For the U.S. Ambassador to the Gambia, Pamela Ann White, pan partnering with the Gambia for sustainable fisheries management is crucial. I'm here uh, because I believe that working with the government of the Gambia on fisheries is extremely important, not just for the future of the Gambia, but for the whole west coast of Africa. The, we know that the, uh, the waters have been overfished. We know we have to protect the, the species. We know we have to know more. And it's with projects just like this one, working with the grassroots people, uh, Dr. Enrup and others are very important to this project because we need to know how to go forward over the next couple of decades to make sure that we protect this very, very valuable species. This is what is one of the primary food sources for the people of Africa, certainly fish for the people of the Gambia. And if we don't protect it, if we don't know what we're doing, if we don't put some rules and policies and professionals in the right places at the right time, we're going to lose this very important uh, resource. Dr. Michael Rice from the Roland Island University in the U.S., we trained about 70 Gambian fishery officials and other environmentalists on sea water quality and its relevance to the Gambia, gave a PowerPoint presentation on the rationale behind the capacity building program. For the content, one of the lucky ones to have benefited from the said training dilated on the content of the draft National Shellfish Sanitation Plan, which recommends improvement in the handling, processing, storage, and landing in areas where shellfish harvesting and processing are carried out. The forum also saw the award of certificate to these men and women who took part in the banner fast sponsor training in America and the donation of laptops and desktops to the fishery department, courtesy of the Banafar project. This latest forum comes at a time when the fishery sector had just validated a five-year strategic plan, which, among other things, seeks to ensure sustainable fisheries management in the Gambia. Louis Mendy, YRTS. Teachers in Region 6 have for the second time converged on the Education Office in Basa to take part in the annual Teachers Award ceremony. The event, attended by a number of local dignitaries, including the regional governor, recognized the efforts of teachers in their bid to mold the children for a prosperous future. Mohamed Jamal Sisi attended the event in Basse, and this is his report. They might be modest in many social and economic respects, but teachers are widely accepted as roots of social, economic, religious, and political reforms. It is often said, and it is true, that the school is the best place to change attitudes. At the school, knowledge and skills are acquired, attitude is changed, and children are developed to have an objective, constructive, and analytical way of thinking. So education is not an end, but a means. In the Gambia, as in many third world countries, teachers account for little socially and economically, despite being unanimously endorsed as number one instruments for social and financial advancements. Thus, teachers in Region 6 have been for two years now enjoying a special day set aside by the directorate to recognize and say thank you to their services, for which it seems no monetary value could reward. Region 6 is the furthest in the country, with a history of reluctance and desire of public servants to serve there. The education director of the region used the occasion to inform the gathering about the change of trend of this attitude for teachers, with our ministry registering a tremendous success in the areas that potentially repelled them. Region 6 is fast becoming a competitive and performing region in terms of teachers' output and students' performance. You should have seen the sketch that was put up by two of our schools, St. George's Upper Basic and uh, Nasir Senior Secondary School.
This positive change of teacher mentality with its resultant absorption in academic achievement, Mrs. Cole says, is attributable to an all-round efforts of important educational partners, urging teachers to keep it up. I will want to conclude my remarks by sincerely urging every single teacher in this region to continue to work harder with greater commitment, dedication, and honesty, which reward will be greater in heaven for the service we are rendering to humanity. It is important the society recognizes and salutes the commitments and sacrifices of teachers whose job Janier Sanyang believes is increasingly transcending mere conventional role of inculcating knowledge, learning for support, and a renowned Croatian educationist. The future of every society is defined by its present care for the young. The knowledge, the skills, the way of thinking and values children acquire in growing up process influence not only the foundation of their lives as individuals, but also the development of the entire community of which they are part. That is why education is such a special and responsible task of every society. This signing says has complicated teachers role and with all the compounding odds have further presented their case of handling the noblest profession under the sun. The occasion was spiced up by the performances by a local scout band and a play on early marriage and teenage pregnancy. Awards of recognition were also issued to deserving schools, teachers, school administrators, with the regional director issuing surprise awards to those people she felt have made her work quite easy and successful over the years. This regional teachers award ceremony that started last year has become an annual event for the educational fraternity of this region. The event seeks to recognize and honor the efforts of those teachers in school that have extraordinarily excelled in the previous academic year. And the event is particularly crucial for uh, those teachers that are given the responsibility of nurturing and uh, shaping the future of those children that will ultimately be given the responsibility of running the affairs of the country in particular and the world in general. With JRTS News, I am Mohamed Jamal Sisi from the Regional Education Directorate Region 6, Basse, Upper River Region. SOS Gambia joins the rest of the SOS family worldwide to commemorate the birth date of its founder, Dr. Haman Minor. The celebration, as Ndaibusu reports, was a family fun day that was meant for the children, their mothers, aunties, and teachers to interact. I answered mosquitoes. There was no one to answer me. During the dark nights, I was filled with terror. No one to guide and protect me. I wondered each day and night what to eat. Losing hope about everything, you came into my life, and my life has changed for good. These children were full of praises to the founder of the SOS Children Villages International, Dr. Harman Miner, who brought back hope into their lives after some difficult early childhood struggles. June 23rd each year is set aside for the SOS Day, and in the Gambia, the 68th anniversary coincided with its 29th year existence. The late Harman Miner initiated the Save Our Soul project 60 years ago to protect children all over the world and give them hope through education and other social initiatives. The Gambia celebration was a family fun day of sports and entertainment that saw the participation of mothers, aunties, educators, children, and the youths of the village. Hadin Jai Ture, village director, uses the opportunity to express sincere appreciation to those that are helping build children in need and help them shape their own future. SOS Children's Villages International is celebrating 40 years of SOS Children's Villages work in Africa with a campaign entitled Light Up My Place to Grow. Six national associations have been identified to drive this campaign and they are Botswana, Kenya, Morocco, South Africa, and last but not the least, the Gambia. In the Gambia, in the Gambia, one of our first activities was the launching of an exhibition on the rights of the child. Drama, singing, dancing, and pageant competition was staged to entertain the kids by mothers and aunties and the village youth. Prizes and gifts were presented to the various winners of the competition. 
Egalitarian, the SOS Children's Villages, the Gambia Goodwill Ambassador, joined the children in a colorful singing exercise to wrap up the proceedings. Thank you.